Hey guys, it's Fraser here. Welcome back to my channel. This video is for anyone that has hit a bit of a wall with their programming. Maybe you're stagnating on certain lifts or just you're not seeing the progress that you want. Look at this video as more of a resource and something you can come back to. Don't take all these 12 methods and tricks and use it uh, in a one Okay, that'd be crazy. But if you've just hit a bit of a wall, you need to refresh your training, this video is for you. So let's get into it. So first up, we have the 80% test, which is a really good way of understanding your muscle fiber makeup. Are you more fast twitch dominant? Are you slow twitch dominant? Or are you somewhere in between? This is important to understand because it can affect what type of training that you should be doing to see better results in terms of building lean muscle mass and building strength. So you might need more high intensity, lower volume type training to get the results you want, or you might need higher volume and slightly lower intensity training, it's worth saying that this gives us a general indication of whether you're fast twitch and slow twitch, okay? But it is something I've used in the past and it is has proven to be very effective in my programming decision making. Now it's also specific to the movement. So I would do this test on lower body and I would do this test in upper body. It's not that, okay, you respond one way on the bench press and then that's gonna be the same on the squat. It depends on your training history and a lot of factors. So what exactly is the 80% test? It's very simple. After a good warm up, when you're fresh and ready and good to go, put 80% of your 1RM on the barbell and then rep out. Now if you're doing this with bench press, obviously use a spotter. If you're doing it for squat, then obviously do it in a squat rack. So when you take this test to failure and you find out where you land with it, so to speak, you'll be able to understand if you need more lower volume and higher intensity, or if you're going to respond better to higher, higher volume and lower intensity. So it's kind of giving your body what it wants. It's worth noting when we're doing this that we're, we're doubling down on your strengths and your body will respond. There are some phases, if you're an athlete, some phases in the season where you're just gonna have to be doing a power block and the principle of specificity and the specific adaptations to impose demands principle is you're going to get better whether, you know, whatever protocol you're doing. It's just some people respond really, really well and adapt quicker to certain types of training and other people take a little bit longer to get there. I think it's really important to sometimes double down on your strength and give your body what it likes to respond in terms of strength training and muscle building. But of course, if you're an athlete and you're trying to perform on the pitch, there are times where you're going to have to be in a power phase. I hope that's clear, guys. Let's move on to the next one. So if you haven't used supersets in a while, bringing them back into your program can make a big difference. You'll see in this example that we're using post-exhaust supersets. So that is Gino is performing his chin-ups and from there he's gonna go in and do his dumbbell bicep curls. Using this type of superset is advanced and it's very difficult. You can do this with dips into tricep pull downs, you can do this with um, press ups into cable flies and the list just goes on. Suffice to say you're doing a compound movement and then you're going into an isolation movement that works one of the same muscle groups that you worked in the compound movement. We typically use this during muscle building phases or if we're trying to maintain muscle mass at the end of, um, during the season and we'll use it at the end of a session typically depending on various factors like is the athlete playing and what's his game schedule, etc. The third tip is to go back to basics with training and think about a block training system if you've never used it before or if you don't really have any training structure. It's really simple. You go through a period of time where you're focused on building muscle and that's the priority and objective. You then move into a strength block and then you move into a power block. That's not to say that you're neglecting the strength and power when you're focusing on muscle. There might be elements of that in the program, but the priority and the focus and the sets and reps are more geared towards muscle building. So the drop catch method is a great way of recruiting fast twitch muscle fibers. Even on isolation exercises, where the, the fiber makeup is more slow twitch based, it's a great new stimulus that will promote growth and help you overcome plateaus. Okay, I, I like this exercise, I like this method, excuse me, when I'm using bicep curls or lateral raises. Try this, do 10 reps with the drop catch method and then 10 normal reps. Yes, you're in that strength endurance range, but that tempo change is going to make a difference. Let me know how you get on the comment section. Try bringing that into your training on isolation exercises. Isometric contractions or iso holds, if I'm writing in the program, is a great way to build strength and reinforce postures that you want to see. Again, it's another thing you can use to overcome a plateau. So if you stagnated, another thing to think about might be your weekly split. There are so many things you can do, so many ways to organize your training week. 
some classic training splits are push pull legs which you can do over three days or six days completely inappropriate for an athlete that's in season okay um, however if you're in the off season if you're in the early 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 pre-season that might be appropriate for you all right there's other ways to do it like anterior day posterior day whole body day which features a magnesium program and that's a really effective way of doing it both in season and out season but suffice to say that looking at your training week and maybe changing something there around the frequency might be something that will help uh, overcome a plateau in your training. Speaking of frequency, increasing the amount of times you do a lift in a given week can make a big difference. So if your bench press or whatever lift it is has stalled, then instead of doing it once a week, doing it twice, even sometimes three times a week can be very appropriate and make a big difference. For example, we tend to do Tuesdays uh, bench press or variation thereof with higher volume and medium to lower intensity and then Friday we tend to do a lot lower volume and much higher intensity of the same lift. That's a surefire way to make sure that they're just going up, up, up year on year. So consider bringing the lift that you want to see improvements in um, at least twice a week and prioritize that for a period of time. So Olympic lifting can be quite polarizing and I have no idea why. Like if you take S and C back to the basics of force equals mass times acceleration, you've got a mass and you need to accelerate it to make an, a successful lift. Um, nobody's saying that you have to do full snatches and full uh, cleans, but understanding that the variations of the Olympic lifts can really help you with your athleticism is gonna make a, a big difference to your training. Now, if you're planning on training for six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, and then stopping, like, okay, just stick to press ups and pull ups and whatnot. But if you're planning on training a little bit longer, then using the Olympic lifts can really help unlock, using the variations of Olympic lifts can really help unlock athleticism. So it's something that I really recommend. I've done lots of videos on techniques of the power clean, so you can check that out there. But I would recommend hiring a local coach who is qualified with Olympic weightlifting in some form and just giving him or her context that, you know, I'm, I'm this athlete or whatever your situation is, um, I don't want to enter weightlifting competitions, but I would like to make sure that I'm performing um, these variations correctly. Could we do one to five sessions, whatever it is, and just tidy up my technique, give me some pointers, etc. So, so cluster sets can be an absolute game changer for muscle building, for strength training, and for developing power. There's lots of research around all three areas, and I'm gonna link in the video description a 45 minute presentation from the leader in research of cluster sets, uh, Greg Half, Dr. Greg Half. So if you're interested and you want to know more, click on the link below and you'll go to his 45 minute presentation where he goes right into the details and the current research. So in this example, we have Santino who is going through his ACL return to play and he's at the later stages of that. So here he's doing half squats with 140 kilograms. All right, and he's got clusters of three. So he's got three sets of six, only we're breaking that up three reps at a time. The idea is that he'll have less of a velocity drop off. His quality of reps will be uh, much better using clusters. So guys, again, if you're interested in the full details of how clusters can work for you, just click on the link in the description that will take you to the presentation that I mentioned previously. A really good method to bring into your strength training if it's something that you've never used before. Have you ever heard people saying, I'm here for a good time, not a long time? Okay, buddy, good for you. You're not in the training game, because if you're in the training game, first of all, it's not always a good time. I think everyone that goes past the first six months of training appreciates that some sessions are just horrendous and very boring, but they contribute to the overall objective and you just need time in the trenches, so to speak. You just need consistency and to keep going and keep going and keep going. In order to do that, you need to stay healthy. One of the things that's going to keep you healthy is making sure that you're going through a good warm-up routine, which ideally would be specific to you, but if not, check out this video, Mobility for Rugby, and that's gonna give you some ideas that will just help open you up before you start training. Okay, there's some stretches in there, there's some dynamic stuff that I recommend everyone to do. Ideally, you know, you have someone profile what you need exactly and what stretches are best for you, but if not, just doing some global mobility work every time before you train is gonna be a good thing to keep you in the game and allow you to be consistent and keep training month on month, year on year. So the one and a half method is exactly as it sounds. It's really simple, but super effective. So you're just doing a complete rep 
followed immediately by a half rep. Okay, now you can do this on exercises such as Bulgarian split squats, I really like that for burning out the quads, um, or press ups, or really any exercise that you like that's at the end of the session and it's more of an accessory exercise. You're, you're getting the pump, you're contributing to uh, session volume and helping facilitate hypertrophy adaptations. So the last tip would be velocity based training. Give yourself velocity targets instead of just weight based targets. So instead of doing uh, five reps with 80%, you might have to do five reps with what absolute ever weight you want, as long as it stays above 0.3 meters per second. This can be a really great way to make sure you're getting in quality reps, developing strength and power, and you can certainly program that as well. You can program off of that. The question is what accelerometer do you use? What do you, how do you get velocity based training? I can definitely do that in another video guys. If you're interested, let me know in the comment section below and I'll explain how we do it and the gold standard and then how you can program off the back of that. But it's certainly something new for a lot of people. It's been around for decades, but for the sort of general population, it's now really quite accessible. You, like, you don't have to be a high level athlete to access the software um, and the hardware you need to implement velocity based training into your program. Thanks very much for watching my video guys. If you like this video, then you're probably going to like this next video. Seven forgotten dumbbell moves. Check it out. There's things like Cuban press and Zotman curls, which you may or may not be aware of. And I will see you on the next one guys. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.